Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple, pilopathology.com and supported by an active learning platform, Vivdolia. After completing community acquired bacterial pneumonia in the last session, let's now understand the concepts of viral pneumonia. So in the next few minutes, we will look into the epidemiology of viral pneumonia. We'll look into the general features of viral pneumonia in terms of its pathogenesis, the various risk factors, the morphological features and clinical features. And we'll try to understand the details of influenza virus in causing viral pneumonia. So what is this community acquired viral pneumonia? Let's talk about this in context of COVID-19. Pre-COVID-19, that's before 2019 and 20, the most common causes of uh, community acquired viral pneumonias were influenza types A and B, respiratory syncytial virus, human metanumovirus, adenovirus, rhinoviruses, rubiola viruses and varicella virus. But presently, it is the SARS-CoV-2 is being implicated as the most common cause of viral pneumonia in the community. Let's now look into the general aspects of viral infections causing respiratory pathology. See, all viruses have the propensity to infect and damage respiratory epithelium. See, when the infection extends into the alveoli, into the lower respiratory tract, these viruses produce inflammation and the inflammation usually is interstitial, means between the alveolar spaces. Sometimes, you know, there is some outpouring of fluid into the alveolar space as well and that's the reason why it is difficult to differentiate or distinguish bacterial and viral pneumonia based on radiologic appearance alone. What exactly these viruses do? What is the pathogenesis? See, viruses have tropisms, you know, they attach to and then enter the respiratory lining cells where there is replication and gene expression resulting in cell death as well as secondary inflammation. Okay, the respiratory lining epithelial cells dies and it also induces inflammation and this result, these are basically the cytopathic changes. So once the cells are died, you know, you know that the protective mechanism in the form of pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium and once that is damaged, so there is inhibition of mucociliary clearance, right? And that predisposes to secondary bacterial infections. Remember, though this viral infection does um, causes very minimal inflammation, it is the secondary bacterial infection which is often more serious than the viral infection itself. So, who are all people at risk for serious complications of viral infections? They are usually extremes of age in the form of infants and older adults. Malnourished individuals are at risk for serious complications. Immunocompromised individuals are at risk for serious complications and people who consume excessive alcohol are often at risk for serious complications by these viral infections. So, the common morphological features include the infection caused by the viruses when it extends into the lung, you know, viral pneumonias, they can be patchy or they can involve the whole lobes, just like, you know, lobar and lobular pneumonia, what we, stu what we studied in bacterial pneumonias, right? Viral pneumonias also can be patchy, they also can involve the entire lobe, right? It can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. On microscopic examination, the affected areas are often red, blue and congested. Microscopically, as I told you earlier, inflammation, they are mostly confined to the alveolar walls, that is the septa. In the septa, the septa is often widened and edematous. It contains lots of these mononuclear inflammatory cells, which contains lymphocytes, macrophages and occasionally plasma cells. The alveolar space, in the classic case of viral pneumonias, they should be free of cellular exudate. Whereas, in the severe cases of viral pneumonias, there can be diffuse alveolar damage as well. Okay, the Alveolar epithelium can also be damaged and then that there can be formation of hyaline membrane. Okay. So, that is in severe cases of viral pneumonias. Remember, we are talking about the general aspects of all viral inflammations, viral infections affecting the respiratory tract. If there is superimposed bacterial infection, picture what you see can be mixed. You can see inflammation in the alveolar space as well, apart from the usual interstitial location of inflammatory cells. 
So this is the histologic picture of you know, viral pneumonia. You can look, look, look at that. These are the alveolar spaces which are really free of any exudate, whereas this particular alveoli containing proteinaceous material and the septa is widened containing lots and lots of mononuclear cells and these are lymphocytes, you know, macrophages and plasma cells. Clinical features, they are extremely varied, can be as simple as, you know, they can masquerade as upper respiratory tract infection, what we call as common cold, to they can be fulminant life-threatening infection as well. Initially, it presents with acute non-specific febrile illness, which is characterized by fever, headache and malaise. And later, you know, you can also have cough with minimal sputum as compared to the bacterial pneumonia where you have lots of sputum production. It's copious sputum in bacterial pneumonia, whereas here it is cough with minimal sputum. So, the inflammatory exudate we saw that it will be in the alveolar wall, right? And that prevents oxygenation of blood flowing through the affected air spaces. Okay, it's because of this there is oxygenation, oxygenation of blood is hampered, which leads to mismatch of ventilation and perfusion. Though the alveolar space is free of exudate, there is normal ventilation. The perfusion is hampered, there is mismatch of ventilation and perfusion and hence respiratory distress in the cases of viral pneumonias are often out of proportion to the physical and radiographic findings. Having understood the general aspects of viral pneumonias, now let's look understand more about influenza viruses. See, these are the viruses which often causes epidemics and periodic pandemics as well. The influenza viruses are categorized into three types based on their core proteins into A, type A, type B and type C. The type A is the most common as well as the most severe influenza uh, viral infection. They have a unique structure with a single standard RNA genome which is divided into eight segments. Each of these RNA genome or segment, you know, they code for different proteins. This is surrounded by a lipid bilayer. This yellow you know, structure, what you are seeing is a lipid bilayer. Embedded in this layer are two crucial proteins. One is hemagglutinin and the second is neuraminidase. Okay, neuraminidase as well as hemagglutinin. The hemagglutinin is the one which helps the virus to attach to the host cell. Whereas, I mean, they have diff there are different types of hemagglutinin. There are 18 different known types, H1, H2, H3 to H18. Whereas neuraminidase is the one which enables the release of new viruses or new virus particles from the host cell after it infects the host cell, right? And again, neuraminidase protein is also of 11 different types starting from N1 to N11. So, as I told you, influenza viruses are categorized into type A, B and C. Type A viruses are further divided into multiple subtypes based on the combination of hemagglutinin and neuraminidase proteins. The common subtypes are H1N1 and H3N2. This H1N1 is the one which caused the famous pandemic back in 1918 and also the swine flu pandemic in 2009. Whereas H3N2 is the one which causes uh, you know, several significant seasonal flu outbreaks. What is the mode of spread of influenza? Usually through the respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes. And they can mutate in two different ways. One is called antigenic drift. Another is called antigenic shift. What is antigenic drift? Basically, there is a minor changes over a period of time which can lead to the new virus strains. Okay, and this antigenic drift is the one which causes epidemics. For example, H3N2. H3N2 is a very slightly different enough from the previous strains. You know, people will have little immunity to these kind of viruses. Whereas antigenic shift, this is a major change which results from the combination of genetic material from different viruses. Okay, it could be a combination of viruses from the humans, the birds, as well as animals. This can lead to a potentially more dangerous strains and cause pandemics because you people don't have immunity for this. H1N1. This H1N1 was the result of 
recombination of the bird flu, swine flu, as well as the human flu, which finally gave gave rise to you know, which finally resulted in the formation of this particular combination H1N1, which is a new virus then which caused major pandemic. Normally, the host produces antibodies against the hemagglutinin and protein, but if the host lacks these protective antibodies, then of course the same mechanism continues. They attach to the respiratory epithelium, they cause death of the cells, they cause inflammation and finally they predispose to bacterial infections which is as i told you more serious than the viral infection itself the morphology clinical features are same as that of the general virus uh, viral infections let's look let's look into the aspects of influenza vaccines these are formulated annually based on the predictions of the most prevalent strains during the upcoming season okay and that's very important uh, to give these vaccines to high risk populations particularly infants and the elderly and the vaccine typically includes three or four influenza viruses, which is often two type A viruses or one or two type B viruses. The reason for giving these vaccines is that it provides a reasonable level of protection to these high-risk populations. And the best time to get vaccinated is before the flu season starts because it does take at least two weeks for the host to develop antibodies. Now, the important concern about the influenza viruses is that it is centered on avian influenza. You know, you have H5N1. This is an avian strain. This has spread throughout the world in wild and domestic birds. And people who are uh, in close contact with these kind of birds can be infected by this avian a strain as well. As of now, there are around 860 H5N1 influenza virus infections which are reported uh, to the World Health Organization. Okay, this is very very fatal kind of disease in humans because it causes severe pneumonia even in adolescents and young adults apart from the extremes of age individuals like infants and elderly. But fortunately, as of now, the transmission of H5N1 avian virus is inefficient. Now imagine if this avian virus recombines with an influenza which is highly infectious for humans and that is antigenic shift what we studied earlier right and that can result in a new strain and if this new strain sustains a sustained human to human transmission then I'm sure there will be a next great influenza pandemic. We all should hope that such a combination should not occur. So that's all about no, the influenza viruses causing respiratory infections, particularly we looked into the aspects of the potential of these viruses causing future pandemics. Now, in the description as well as the pinned comment below, I have uh, posted a link for you to solve multiple choice questions as well as, you know, a short answer type of questions so that your learning will be active and this is via Wisdolia. The good thing about this is that you can get an immediate feedback if you go wrong in answering those questions. It's fun to learn. I would suggest you to try attempting these questions so that you have a deeper understanding of the topic which I have just covered. So that's about community acquired viral pneumonia. We discussed about the epidemiology, the general features of viral pneumonia as well as the influenza virus in detail. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries. If you feel this video useful, do consider subscribing and don't forget to share to your friends. And do not forget to click on the link below to have a practice session. Thank you.